guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you a cool tutorial using liquid clay. So I'm going to be showing you how to create this technique that I've shown in this bezel over here and I'll also be showing you how to create a much fancier bezel than that inspired by this bowl that I made. So it's going to look a bit different than this, we're not going to be colouring it like this because um, uh, we're going to just leave it pearl white, but we're going to have an ocean theme around the border, and so let's get started with that, and then I'll be able to show you. So I'm going to be using the largest cutter in my rounded rectangles set, and this is my largest cutter, and I'll provide a link to where you can buy that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gently going to press it into the clay just to create a light marker like that. Now just keep it on the clay for the moment and bring over a blade. And what I want you to do is I want you to just cut out a kind of oval-ish pattern out of the center here and just lift that out. So just like that. So I want you to create that. Now I'm just going to smooth out this marker a little bit because it's a little bit too prominent for my liking. There we are. And also I'm going to be smoothing these edges to get rid of that really sharp edge and just beveling it almost. There we are. Then I'm just going to trim up this excess because I need that. But don't don't trim too much around your hole because you are still going to need some stability. So just pick that up and move that out the way for the moment. And we'll tend to the back now. So what you're going to need is some pearl white roll that out onto a, the thickest setting on your pasta machine just like that and then I just want to trim away this excess because we only need a little bit and I want to create a backing for it so again put that aside and grab this and what you want to do is you want to take strips that and lay them next to each other pop them on top just like that there we go and then roll that into a cylinder just squish that up And start twisting and rolling and twisting and rolling and so on. Until you get a fairly long piece of clay. And then just cut off seconds sections. And just twist them before you do anything and then roll them into a nautilus shape and bring over another piece this one just had a little air bubble in it that I have to get rid of and roll that out and remember to twist it and roll into another cylinder and then stick that together and just carry on doing that until you've made a somewhat large sheet just like that then gently squish that together so that you get rid of all the holes And I'm just sticking this down firmly onto the tile while I do this. Okay, 
now we're ready to use it. Bring over my tissue blade and I'll shave. And you're going to get a nice little Nautilus pattern. And I'll take the best pieces and I'm going to stick them together. These ones actually, ironically, are the best pieces. Get rid of that. You don't have to be precise with this. There we are. I'm just going to shave away a little bit here. Here. Okay, I'll move that out of the way and I'll pop that through my pasta machine on my middle setting like that. Then I'll roll it through on the next setting down. But I've changed direction, so I ran it through this way, then I flipped it and ran it through this way. Now I'm going to flip it again and run it through my second finished setting. There we are. Now check which side you like, because sometimes uh, you'll find that you prefer a side. And bring over that sheet of clay that you had before, the thick one that was rolled out on your thickest setting, and place this sheet on the back. And now I'm just going to trim away these areas so that I know where my backing is. Okay. Then I'll bring over that other piece that I have. And I'll squish that down onto my clay. And gently smooth these edges on like that. And then I'll bring over my largest cutter again and I'll position this where I want it. So I need to be able to see what I'm doing here. Okay, then just press down. And when you press down, make sure that you go the whole way down, obviously. There we are. Okay. And then just gently smooth around these edges. And now because you've pressed all of those layers together, it should mean that you don't have any seams. So just go around with your finger and remove any bumps or mumps that you might have and just smooth off the edges until you're happy okay yeah, and that's what the back looks like just gently smooth off the back Then just I'm going to rub the tile to make sure that I get rid of any excess clay. Now I just want to bring my cutter over again to make sure that I did get it correct. Okay. And now we are ready to start our sculpting. So I'm just going to bring over a ball tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, and that's too large. Here we are. I'm just going to go around the edges over here and dapple them with my ball tool to get this lovely dappled look. And this is what most of our um, bezel border is going to look like. 
and then we'll embellish the sides a little bit with some of the um, pieces that I have in this bowl over here. But most of it's going to be this nice dappled colour which is really nice when you're working with a pearlescent clay because it makes that light reflect. And don't forget to go around these edges and just make sure that you don't have any spots that look smooth. And now don't press too hard because you don't want to be distorting your shape or anything. And I'll go around the entire outside and then I'll show you what we're going to embellish it with. So you can see that the dappled surface really looks quite nice now and it's going to stand out against this really vibrant technique that we are going to apply. Now you'll need just a little bit of excess pearl white. And now if you wanted to maybe skip the technique that we're going to be doing in the middle here, you might want to take some of that excess um, mica shift that we did on the back and apply it to the front over here. So that sheet that you applied the backing to that was rolled out on the thickest setting you'd want that to actually be a mica shift and then that means that this part over here would have some sort of an image in it but that's going to get covered up so I don't really see the point of it but if you weren't going to cover it up and wanted to just maybe put some shells in there and put some resin in that would be quite nice okay so you'll have a little ball of polymer clay and pearl white same color and you're going to need a fairly large ball tool and just stick that ball onto the end and slowly work it up and twist so that it's loose and just work it up so that it starts stretching it just like that okay so once you're happy just stick it onto the ball tool and then use the ball tool to stick it onto the bezel super easy. Then you take another ball and repeat the process. And now you can vary the size of ball tool that you use for the size, to vary the size of hole that you have. Just make sure that you stick it on properly. And then I like to take another ball tool and stick them both in and then press against each other so that these two stick together for extra support. Okay. And the larger your ball of clay, the larger this is going to be. And you can leave them plain like they are, but I want to texture them as well. So I've just stuck another one on there. And then you can widen this opening by taking two ball tools and just gently stretching. And just stick it onto the neighbours as well. And I like to flare these openings to give it a more realistic look just like that then I'll start taking some smaller pieces of clay the smaller they are the smaller these are going to be and then I'm going to take a smaller ball tool and pop this onto the end and stick that in there just gently flare the opening and then I'll mess with it until I'm happy that it looks nice. And then I'll show you how to texture this. So I probably will apply one more over there. Just stick it onto the neighbours. So it's quite important to have a ball tool at this point. And then just gently flare those edges. Okay, happy with that. Then you just bring over your craft knife or something with a sharp edge and gently texture these edges. I don't like to texture them heavily, I just like to give them a tiny bit of texture. Excuse me if my head got in at any point there. And do realise that as you're doing this, you're going to be flaring those edges out a little bit more. So if you didn't want them to 
flare out too much then you could skip the texturing or you could just skip flaring them out before you texture them. There you go, so just a little light texture is nice. Okay, then you'll bring over another ball of clay. Take this and stick it onto your tile quite firmly. Then take smaller balls of clay and just roll them out. And just taper the edges as well. Then take those and use your ball tool to press them onto your piece. And repeat this a few times so that you end up with a piece of kelp or an anemone, whatever you would like it to be. I guess in this case, since we're kind of replicating a coral reef, it would be an anemone. See, you'll just take it and make sure to stick it on properly because these pieces will fall off later on otherwise. Take another piece, pop it on and try to keep them from sticking to each other too much. So try to keep these pieces separate. And you'll continue laying these segments on until you're happy that it's full. Now I've made a bigger ball of clay at the bottom here than I'm actually going to be using just because it makes it easier for me. But I'm only going to cover about half of it. I'll continue doing this and show you when I'm done. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm just going to use my blade to gently pull most of the excess clay away and then gently smooth off these edges because you don't want sharp edges. That won't look natural. And then pick it up. Just be careful with it at this point. And I'm going to stick it there. And then I'm going to use my ball tool to attach it to my dappled surface. I've got hair there, I need to get rid of. If you find anything that's not good, just get rid of it. Okay. And then I'm just gently and carefully smoothing it onto the clay. It can be a little fiddly. There we are. Then take your pieces and just gently bend them in and make them squiggle around so that they look Uh, natural. Okay, so that's the seaweed, or the, excuse me, the anemone, and you can move those tentacles around as you want. And then I want to put another little cluster of these over here, but I want them to be smaller, so I'm going to be working with smaller pieces of clay. And it's basically just the same process. So I don't want to overcrowd this bezel. If you wanted to embellish it with more pieces, you no, certainly could. But I don't want to overcrowd it because um, this is supposed to complement the piece that we're going to be putting in the middle. You've got to remember that it still is the bezel and is a component in the design. It's not supposed to oops, override the design completely. So just be careful not to completely overdo it. So you can see that these pieces are much smaller compared to our other one. But just stick them together for extra support and you can always just flare these pieces out. And it's better to flare them as well because it makes it look more natural in my opinion. So I'll continue doing that until I'm happy. Okay, so that is all we need for our bezel. So bring over your blade and pick it up and just be careful on this front because we've got such delicate pieces but just check the back make sure you're happy we're going to apply a bale to it once this front part has baked because we can't be mucking around with it right now 
you just go around and make sure that you've got rid of any hairs. I can see there's a little hair there. My cat's hair gets everywhere. There we are. And I'm going to pop this in the oven for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature because I was using Pearl White Prima today. And then I'll show you how to apply a backing over here. And then we will pop some clay in here. And we are going to be using liquid clay, so it's going to be a cool technique, so I'll show you how to do that. And in the meantime, I do have a piece that was already in the oven, so I can show you how to apply the um, bale to that one. And you'll basically just apply, apply the bale to this one in the exact same way. Okay. So you can see that this bezel is very similar to the one that we just made, except that I was experimenting around with a different back. I personally prefer the one that we made earlier. But anyway, the same principle applies. So I'll put that off to the side and I'll bring over a sheet of pearl white that was rolled out on the middle setting of my pasta machine. And I'm just going to cut that out and I'll just trim that up then I'll bring over a wooden skewer and I'm going to wrap that clay around there make a mark trim up by that mark and I am going to smooth out the seam. Don't worry about getting rid of a lot of the seam. This is going to be hidden because this is going to be the part that's um, sitting against the bead. But you do want to smooth it out to a certain degree. Then I'm just going to press that with my blade. And then gently work it loose with the skewer. And once it's loose I'm just going to smooth off the fingerprints move it down to the bottom there and take it off and then I'm just going to press against the tile to get it all even and then I'm going to pop it back onto the skewer and bring it over our piece and now you want to decide where you want your bale and I want it over here I'm going to stick it down and it might not stick if it doesn't, just gently reshape it on your skewer. I'll just take it off and move it over there. And I'll bring over some bacon bond. And this will help us stick it down. So I'll bring this over and I'll work out where I want it. And I'm going to run a thin line of bacon bond across over there there we go and I'll press that on Make sure that it's in place and that I'm happy with the contact that it's making. And now I've made this bale pretty large because I want to be able to put a rubber cord through it later on. And you can see this doesn't match the backing but this was an experiment bead. So that's fine. This pearl white will match the back on the other bead. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Then what you would do is you want to bake this on something that has a bit of a um, edge to it. I'll show you. So here's just some polishing papers for an example. So you'd pop it on the tile in the oven and then you'd bake it with the bale hanging over the edge of the tile so that it's not lying flat against your tile. And you'd bake that for another half an hour and then once that's done we can start assembling our necklace. Well not assembling our necklace, we can start fussing around with the liquid clay as we want. Okay, so these are out of the oven now, 
and so we are now ready to apply our liquid clay to them so we can do sanding after we've applied the liquid clay because you might get some little accidents with the liquid clay and so you'll want to sand those off later now pop them on top of a ceramic tile on top of a piece of paper because we're going to bake them like this and so I don't want the backs to get shiny spots and I've rested them like this so they're nice and flat and their bales are hanging off of the edge here which is how I bake them so now you're going to need some white polymer clay and I'm using Kato today and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour a decent amount into here and just be careful not to get it on the tentacles or anything on the sides there we go. and once I've got a certain amount then I can bring over a pick and coax it into the spots where I can't drip it in because you want this touching all of the sides and so you're probably going to need to pour more liquid clay in but just start with a little bit and then fill it up after you've scraped it all to the edges similar to what you would do with resin because you don't want to over pour because we want to leave enough space for us to put a decent amount of resin in here and I'm using pure white polymer clay, not translucent. I just wanted to make that clear. The translucent won't really work. And it must be white because otherwise you're not going to be able to see your technique. So it definitely has to be white clay. Okay, so we've almost scraped it to all of the edges there. And then just use your pick to cover up these areas. And be careful to not make air bubbles. I made a little air bubble there, and that's not a train smash, but we want to avoid air bubbles as much as we can. Okay, then I'm going to pour a little bit more into here, and because I spread everything out, it's just going to self level for me. There we are. Okay, and then I'll do the same for this one. Okay, so I've popped the liquid clay in and I have allowed it to level for about 10 minutes just to let the air bubbles rise and be popped and for the liquid clay just to be nice and level. So now I'm going to be going with two different um, colour themes. Um, I'm going to have one that's more of a greenish blue and one that's more of a bluish purple. So here are my chosen colours. I have amethyst. Stone washed, sailboat blue, and turquoise. And that is going to go in one bezel. Then for the next one, I am going to have turquoise, pull, patina, and mermaid. Now you can use any colours that you want, um, these are just the ones that I wanted to use today. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one first. Now you're going to need some sort of a pin, a skewer would work as well, and this is just going to help you apply it to your uh, liquid clay. So I'm going to start with my sailboat, which is my preferred colour. And I'm just going to drip some of that onto my piece and then apply that to liquid clay. Here you can see it looks really cool. Okay, and now the smaller the drops you put onto your skewer, the smaller they will be. Just make sure that you add at least some. There we go. So if you've watched my fractals video that I posted on YouTube a little while ago, this is very similar, um, just with liquid clay. 
so you can make them bigger by just adding more. Now you can see that they're not the same as the fractals, they're quite different, but it's a very similar very similar style I guess. Now I'll bring over the stone washed and I just want to clean off my pick because you don't really want it to get contaminated. And I'll drip a biggish drop or try to get a biggish drop on here. Now if you're having a little bit of trouble you might want to try a skewer because the skewer is made of wood and so it will soak up the liquid, the alcohol ink and therefore will make it easier for you to apply it to the clay. So let me just bring that over. There, so you can see that it will sit better. There we are. Now I don't want to use one of these all the time because you're only going to be able to get big drops with it. So whenever you want big drops, use this skewer and whenever you want smaller drops, use your um just use your um metal pick. Okay. Let me just pop that out the way. And I'll bring over this purple. Oops, and out of the camera there. Let me just drop that over there because I don't want too much. And I'm going to use the skewer to pick it up. And then I'm just going to feed this blob to make it bigger. And I'm just gently going to go in here and add. Now I only want a few big ones. I like mostly the small ones because they look more interesting. There you are. And so you're going to see that it's going to change colour a little bit. And also I hope that you can see that it's, you're getting a slight crackling around the edge over here. Where the um, alcohol ink's been sitting for a little while. That's something that will naturally happen, and that's something that you want. Now, also, like with the skewer, that you are going to get a little bit of the colours mixing together. Because the colour will stay on the wooden skewer to a certain degree. So, like here, I've mixed a little bit of the um, sailboat blue with the amethyst. And so you can see that I'm getting a more blue purplish blue. So just play around with it and see what until you're happy with it. And then once you're happy you can you want to leave it for a little while because you need it to sit. So you'll leave it for about half an hour to sit and then you'll apply you'll pop it into the oven. And I'll show you what it looks like before we pop it into the oven. Once I'm happy with it. Okay, so I have finished this one. And this one is partially finished. So you might notice in this one that I've got little spots um, of different colours inside the larger spots. So I just wanted to show you how to do that quickly. And I've also changed the colours. So this one I only used the amethyst, stone washed and sailboat blue. And this one I used sailboat blue, turquoise and pool. I left out the mermaid and the patina. And that's just because I changed my mind. I changed my mind a lot. Okay, so you'll just take this and let me just bring over the right skewer. I'll just dab the end. You don't want to apply too much alcohol. That was a little too much, so I'll just pop that back in the bottle. Just apply a little bit. I 
and this will add additional interest to these areas and so you'll just add spots of color and then you'll switch to a different color so in this case I'm going to be using turquoise the other one was the pool and again you'll just and drip it on your skewer away from this because if you make a spill you're going to be quite sad if you do make a mistake um, you could always try and wash this out at the sink and remove the liquid clay but it probably would make quite a mess and wouldn't work all that well so you can try it if you make a mess but it's you know just better not to make a mess here we are then I'll move on to the next color which is pool and so on until I'm happy that I've got all my dots okay and so you can leave it like that if you want but I want to bring over some alcohol and this is 99% um, anything over 90% will work and I'm just going to bring over a skewer and I'm going to dip it into that solution so I get a little bit on the end and I'm going to use that in here to create these light spots so remember this is still alcohol, you can still do what you usually do with the alcohol, like make these little spots. And to a certain degree I think it looks better on the liquid clay. So you can go around and make these little spots in here to lighten up some areas if you wanted to. And just remember the more alcohol you have on your piece, the larger the spot is going to be, the smaller amount that you have on your piece the smaller the spot okay and so I'll just continue doing that until I'm happy with it and then we will bake it okay so that's what these look like now so I'll just bring that up gently for you to see I'll just turn that lighting up a bit here we are so you can see what that looks like in detail and we're going to put resin over this later on and I'm going to bake this on this tile as it is. Here's what the other one looks like. And so you can see it looks really nice and you can fuss with it a bit more if you want to but I'm pretty happy with it. So now you'll pop these in the oven for a full hour just to make sure that everything's fully baked uh, because this is the final time it will be going in the oven. And then once we're done we can do a little bit of sanding along the edges, maybe shine it up a little bit um, apply some renaissance wax along these edges maybe maybe not we'll see how it goes and then we'll apply the resin okay so here they are now that they're out of the oven so you can see the color shifts just a little bit um, in the oven some of the colors go a little bit lighter some of them go a little darker um, some of the colors might split a little so you can see that this um, I believe it was stone washed um, splits a little bit and so you get a little bit of a um, purple tint around the edges so you might want to make just a little test piece of liquid clay pop your colors on see what they're going to look like if you don't already know what they're going to look like because your colors can change just a little bit but anyway I'm quite happy with how this looks now um, I don't really think I'm going to put any highlights inside here I think it's okay as it is so now what I want to do is I want to do some sanding so I'm going to bring over my 400 grit polishing papers and I'm going to start sanding the backs and the sides and now you want to be careful because you don't want to be breaking anything on the front so just handle it carefully and you don't need to sand it too much I don't want to add a really really high gloss or anything like that I just want to sand it from my 400 up to my 8000 grit and that will be fine I don't need to put any renaissance wax on I've decided I'm quite happy with how it is I just want to sand away any excess that might be there and you also want to sand the edges but again you've got to be careful of these little bits that you have added on so just be careful not to break those off and if you're having a bit of trouble um, you can always just avoid putting this one on because this one's the main problem these other bits are just fine so just give it a light sand along these edges the front should be just fine you don't have to really sand that 
and I'll do that with both of these pieces and then when we're done I can show you how to apply the resin in here. Okay, so now that I've finished sanding, let's move on to our resin. So let me just drop the colour because I am terribly sorry about it, but this is the only colour silicone mat I can get. And this is the best thing I have found when it comes to uh, resining things. So what we'll do is we'll position this and allow the bales to hang over the uh, edge over here so they'll sit nice and flat. So I'll put those off to the side and I'll bring over our measuring cup and our ice resin. Now I like to use this ice resin plunger because it's just so much easier than using one that um, you have to measure out by hand. And so I'm just going to open up this thing and pull that off and then I'm going to let this stuff drop to the bottom. Oh, excuse the dog. Yeah, I'll let it drop to the bottom. And then I'm going to pour out the right amount. There we are. Just pressing evenly. Let all the drips go down. And then suck it back up by pulling the plunger back up. And then pop your lid back on. Then you'll just mix this up. Okay, so I've mixed the resin for around five minutes and I've also let it sit for a little while and you can see it has a few bubbles in here, so just blow lightly. And that will get rid of most of the bubbles. Then I'll bring over our pendants and now you'll be very careful because you only want the resin to be in this basin. So just take a little bit at a time and drip it in. And don't drip it in in all one area. It helps to kind of drip it all over the place and then it joins together sort of. And then gently start coaxing it up against the edges of your bezel wall. Very gently. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to swap to the pointed end. And you only want it on these edges. It's okay if it overlaps just a tiny bit, but not too much. Just continue dripping the resin on and working it around these edges until you're finished and then you can fill in the space in the middle so sometimes it helps to pick this up at this point because there's not so much resin in here that it's uncontrollable so just pick it up and gently work it along these edges like under here where these tentacles are you're going to need to drip a bit of resin in over there. So just go carefully all the way around and then fill it in. And I do the exact same with the other one. Just don't get the resin on the tentacles, you only want it in this bezel area. Okay, so there we are now that I have put all the resin on. Now you want to bring over a straw of some kind and just blow over the surface to get rid of air bubbles. And now the trick is to not blow too hard but to rather blow warm air. The warm air pops the bubbles. So hopefully the camera picked up. Now I'll sit here for maybe a few minutes or so just to pop as many of the bubbles as I can. Then I would let this uh, cure for about 24 hours or overnight and then I'll show you how to string it. And it's just going to be a really easy string method, we're just going to be using rubber cord. So basically this is the project. And it looks quite cool, this would make quite a nice fridge magnet I think. 
Um, and it would probably also make quite a nice ring if you were into largish rings. But I thought it would look nice as a pendant and it's a really nice um, beachy theme and so I really like it. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. I had a lot of fun doing it. So I'll let these cure and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so these are all finished curing. And so you can see that we have kind of a little tidal pull in there. So you can see that the resin reflects in there. And so it's going to protect that also. And it's just when you wear it, it's going to just flash occasionally and give it that kind of watery look that you want. And so that's basically it for these. Now I'm just going to bring over the cord that we are going to use. And I thought that just a simple rubber cord would look quite nice with these. So this is a pre-made one that I got from Fire Mountain Gems. And all you do is you just pop the one end through the bale. Just like that. And you might need to gently coax it through. You can use just a little skewer to help push it through. There we go. Because it sticks a little bit to the outside of the um of the uh polymer clay. So once you've got the little point through, you can then pull it through and then it's easy. Okay, and then you'll tie up the clasp and that is what you will have. So, I do hope that that tutorial was helpful to you and if it was, please do let me know as that is always helpful to you. Ah, to me, excuse me. And please do send in photos of what you do using this tutorial if you do do it as that I always love to look at. So please do do that. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.